Uh, my name is Julius Mohunga, and I'm the program director of culture at the Kenya National Commission for UNESCO. We're going to make a presentation on indigenous languages and international obligations. And here we want to focus so much on UNESCO perspective. Why are indigenous languages important in the eyes of UNESCO? So I will make a presentation from there um, uh, to focus on UNESCO definitions. How does UNESCO define indigenous languages? Then we'll move into the global statistics on indigenous languages or languages in general and we, 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 we later uh, narrow down to indigenous languages. Uh, we also give the policy statement, UNESCO policy statement on indigenous knowledges, then um, focus on the international obligations. What has the international community proclaimed itself on matters of indigenous languages? And lastly, we, we are going to give uh, uh, a conclusion on um, indigenous languages and uh, UNESCO, how UNESCO views indigenous languages. So, very quickly going into the definition of indigenous languages, um, UNESCO defines lingu indigenous languages or languages in general in four main ways. First of all, it looks at uh, a language as a carrier of human heritage, that is in terms of identity, historical, cultural, and linguistic materials. It also views a language as a local knowledge repository system in terms of identity and ethnic issues, traditional knowledge and biodiversity. It also looks at language as a system for communication between people, including the political, sociocultural, and economic domains. And also it looks at language as a regional, uh, in a, reg a language as a regional, national, and global e economic political resource that needs to be managed as an asset along with other assets, for example, the natural assets, human, res human resource, financial, and all other assets that are, part of, uh, that are part of good governance and societal development. The global statistics on languages. There are about 8,324 languages that are spoken, either spoken or signed that are documented by governments public institutions, and academic communities. Of those 8,000 plus languages that I have talked about, around 7,000 of those languages are still in use. And of those 7,000 languages that are in use, 600 languages have disappeared in the last century at a rate of one language in every 14 days. And this is quite an alarming rate because if this does not stop or it continues, then we are bound to lose as many languages as they are. So one, in, in every, one language in every 40 days ceases to be spoken. And here, remember, I'm talking about it ceases to be spoken. I have not said, or I'm not saying that it has disappeared, but it has ceased to be spoken. And the statistics have it that by 2080, the rate of language disappearance will increase to 16 languages per year. And in the middle of the next century, 26 languages will be lost each year or one in every two weeks. So globally, therefore, 40% of the population does not even have access to education, to an education, to a language they speak or understand. That means, therefore, People are being taught in languages that they really do not understand or in languages that they do not have access to. So what is an endangered language, language therefore? An endangered language is a language that originated in a specific place and was not brought to that place from anywhere. So this is a language that springs up from a given community and it is spoken there. So it has not been exported to other areas or it was not imported into that area. It came up from that specific place and it's spoken there. 
So, in a wider sense, we are saying an indigenous language is a language that not only identifies a people's origin or membership in a community, but which also carry the ethical values of the ancestors, the indigenous knowledge systems that make them one in the land and are crucial to the survival and to the hopes and aspirations of their youth. So, having known what um, indigenous languages are, I want to focus so much now on UNESCO and indigenous languages. So, UNESCO, as the UN agency responsible for um, the development of languages, there is a language policy. UNESCO has a language policy or has proclaimed itself on matters of indigenous languages. And according to UNESCO, it believes that everyone has the right to learn their own language and that it is an important means to improving learning, learning outcomes, and social emotional development. I have already mentioned, in line with what I have said, I have already mentioned that 40% of the global population, of the global population does not have access to an education to a language that they speak and understand. And this is the reason why UNESCO therefore believes that everyone has the right to learn in their own language. Not a language that has been imported, not a second language, but in their own language, a language that, that which they understand best. So what is therefore the importance of indigenous languages? Indigenous languages, like any other language, are modes of communication with complex systems of knowledge that have been developed over a period of time. And these languages, therefore, are very central to the identity of indigenous peoples, the preservation of their cultures, their worldview, and visions, and an expression of self-determination. I therefore want to look at uh, international instruments on indigenous languages. So, when we are talking about um, UNESCO and its role in indigenous languages. We also want to understand how the international community has proclaimed itself on matters of indigenous languages. And therefore, by trying to shed some light on how the international community has proclaimed itself on these matters of indigenous languages, we want to reflect on the instruments, the in international instruments on indigenous languages. Now, we also, we also need to understand that one of the most important instruments that uh, addresses issues of indigenous languages is the United Nations Declarations, Declaration on Human Rights. That is the central document that proclaims itself on matters of the rights of indigenous people, including languages, because language is an inalienable right to people or to humanity. And therefore, the, that declaration, the Universal Declaration of human, human, human Rights, in the first place, recognizes uh, languages as an inalienable right of humanity. And out of that declaration, therefore, the first declaration that I want to point out that goes straight into languages is the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, which was proclaimed in 2007. Now, Article 13 of that declaration states that indigenous peoples have the right to revitalize, use, develop, and transmit to future generations their languages, oral traditions, writing systems, and literature. Further, it provides that states shall take effective measures to protect that right, including through interpretation in political, legal, and administrative uh, proceedings. Still in the same declaration, Article 14 and 16 of the same declaration, uh, state indigenous people's rights to establish their educational systems and media in their own language and to have access to an education in their own language.
There are also other U UN responses, other UN international instruments on indigenous languages. And these are, for example, the Indigenous and Tribal Peoples Convention number 169 of the International Labour Organization. It also talks about how um, states need to uh, guarantee indigenous people's uh, language rights. The other international instru instrument is the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. And lastly, the Convention on the Rights of the Child, among others. The Convention on the Rights of the Child also pronounces itself uh, the, the rights of indigenous people's language, just like uh, the other instruments that I have mentioned. There are also other UN responses on the indigenous languages, language crisis. Um, during my introduction on this presentation, of course, we did talk about uh, indigenous languages disappearing or languages disappearing at a very faster, faster rate. Now, the UN has some responses, has responded to that crisis where indigenous languages are disappearing. So I want to look at some of the responses to, the indigenous, to this indigenous language crisis. And one of it is the creation of the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. So the UN created a forum on indigenous issues. Now this forum has on quite a number of uh, times addressed matters of indigenous languages. For one, it has consistently drawn attention to the threats against indigenous languages and pushed for action to promote and protect the languages. Again, in 2003, it recommended that governments introduce indigenous languages in public administration in indigenous territories where feasible or applicable. In 2005, the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Language recommended that UN country offices make efforts to disseminate the activities in publications in indigenous languages. And over the years, the forum has recommended that states support the creation of indigenous language and cultural studies centers in universities and encourage UNESCO to support such initiatives. Other UN responses to the indigenous languages can also be found in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. So SDG target 4.5, SDG 4, Target 5 aims to ensure equal access for indigenous people to all levels of education and vocational training and the use of indigenous language in education and training as an approach to meet that target. And in 2016, the UN General Assembly proclaimed 2019 as the International Year of Indigenous Languages to draw the attention to the critical loss of indigenous languages and the urgent need to preserve, revitalize, and promote them at the national and international level. So having looked therefore at um, the UN responses to ind the indigenous languages crisis, I now want to focus on the international obligations under UNESCO. What has UNESCO, as the agency that is charged with the responsibilities of cultural development, including matters of language, pronounced itself on matters of uh, indigenous languages. So UNESCO in 2001 pronounced the Universal Declaration of, on Cultural Diversity. Now in this de declaration, it committed, the declaration is a commitment to human rights and fundamental freedoms, in particular the right of persons belonging to minorities and those of indigenous people. And according to the declaration, safeguarding the diversity of languages is crucial to protecting both cultural and biological diversity. In 2003, UNESCO came up with a standard setting instrument on the safeguarding of intangible cultural heritage, which is the 2003 Convention for the Safeguarding of the Intangible Cultural Heritage. Now, under Article 2, 
of that convention where it defines what is intangible cultural heritage, that is 2A, 2B of the same article rec recognizes language as a vehicle through which intangible cultural heritage is transmitted. And of course we know intangible cultural heritage is transmitted from generation to generation through its own domains including oral traditions, uh, uh, performing arts, rituals and festive events, songs and dances. So these are the carriers of the language. Languages live in these songs, live in riddles, it lives in, um, in tongue, tongue twisters and all those forms of oral expressions. So the protection therefore and safeguarding of those traditions, oral traditions, expressions is a sure way of safeguarding a language in its entirety. And here we are not talking about um, a, a promoting language of, uh, through perhaps uh, establishing dictionaries and grammar and databases, but we are talking about promoting indigenous languages through oral expressions such as riddles, tongue twisters, um, uh, 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 stories, songs and dances. These are the carriers of, of language. Uh, so again, I want to focus on uh, the international obligations under UNESCO on matters of indigenous languages. Again, in 2016, the General Assembly, UNESCO General Assembly of 2016, it proclaimed 2019 as the International Year of Indigenous Languages. So why did UNESCO therefore proclaim 2019 as the International Year of Indigenous Languages? There were two aims to it. One, it was to draw attention to the critical loss of indigenous languages, and two, to show the urgent need to preserve, revitalize, and promote them at the national and international level. Through this proclamation of 2019, in 2022, the UN Resolution 135 proclaimed 2022 to 2032 as the International Decade of Indigenous Languages. And this was born out of the 2019 proclamation on the International Year of Indigenous Languages. So after a successful um, a year of Indigenous Languages 2019, UNESCO thought it wise to come up with a whole resolution to proclaim a whole decade of indigenous languages. Now, what was the aim of the International Decade of Indigenous Languages that was proclaimed in 2022? There were only two aims. One was to draw the global attention on the critical situation of many indigenous languages, and two, to mobilize global resources for their preservation, revitalization, and promotion. In conclusion, therefore, I want to say that indigenous peoples derive their identities, values, and knowledge systems from their interaction with the environment. And that their languages are shaped by their environments. It is their attempt to describe their surrounding that forms the basis of those unique uh, tongues, the ones that we call mother tongues. And therefore, UNESCO promotes the right to education and particularly education in mother tongue, including indigenous languages, as well as intergenerational transmission of intangible cultural heritage through formal and non-formal education. I thank you, and that is the end of my presentation.